Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. First thing I want to do is I want to talk about what we did yesterday and why we did it. So, we did our James Bond problem. We had our marble, which was a fake James Bond, and he had to escape to safety by jumping into a moving truck. So, let's kind of recap the entire scenario. This is what we got. So, what we did was we had James Bond hanging out way up high, our ceiling, and we had our cart, which simulated a little flatbed truck, moving at a constant velocity. That constant velocity truck was moving across. James Bond had to leap to safety by jumping inside the truck. So we combined two completely independent events. James Bond jumping and falling down here has no dictation on the truck's path. And the truck's path, well, granted, James Bond wants to jump inside the truck, but the truck's path isn't going to change just because James Bond. So these two events, completely independent, and yet what we were able to do is we were able to solve to figure out where that truck should be before James Bond made the leap to come down and hopefully land in safety. Why did we do this? Why, what was the purpose of doing these two events? Was it just to make something more complex, a fun, challenging kind of problem? So what we know so far is that Gravity is an attraction force between an object and the Earth. And the Earth ends up making all objects accelerate towards it with an acceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared. Now granted, when we did our lab, we didn't use negative 10, we used real world applications, so we ended up looking up what the value of acceleration was in Bettendorf. We also know how to solve kinematic equations. With some given variables, we were able to solve for unknowns, such as the amount of time it should take for our object to fall. But we also only know how to do it in one direction. We only know how to do this with a vertically falling object or with a car on a road where it speeds up or it slows down as it gets to a red light. So what we are going to try and do is we are going to try and relate what we know with two-directional motion. Motion of an object that doesn't just go up-down and it doesn't just go side-side, but it goes in both. All right, now in a second, I'm going to ask for the video to be paused. And before this happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe for you two separate events. And what you are going to do is in your Google forum, you are going to make a prediction. Now, whether you're right or wrong, I don't really care. But this is our prediction. I want you to tell me which one is going to hit the ground first. Which one is going to hit the ground first? Now, scenario one, I'm going to take this tennis ball. I'm going to hold it out to my side, and I'm going to let it go. Second scenario, I'm going to take the tennis ball, and I'm going to be moving. I'm going to be walking. Then, I'm going to let it go. And you're going to make a prediction on which one will hit the ground first. Will it be the one that is stationary and falls, or will it be the one that's moving and then falls? So, pause the video, wait until everybody makes their predictions, and then start it back up. So was this what you expected to have happen? Were you expecting that an object that moves faster, and an object that is stopped, should both hit the ground at the same time? Now, why do you think this is? There is clearly one object moving faster than the other, but yet they both fall and hit the ground at the same time. I want you to take two minutes and talk with your partner, talk with your table, and try and figure out why this is. And once you've discussed it, 
what I want is I want one of you guys to type up in the Google forum what your explanation was, why you thought this was happening. Now again, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. I just want you to think about why it's happening. So let's look at this. What I've got is I've got the blue ball, which is going to represent the stationary tennis ball. And I've got the green ball, which represents the, op the object that's in motion. It's got some velocity. Now, if we think about what's happening, let's think about the directions independently. What I mean by that is let's think about just the vertical, the up-down part of it, and then just the horizontal part of it. So in just the up-down part, how are these objects moving? What are the givens that we know? How are these objects moving in the up-down direction in the very beginning? All right, now the first thing we can say is we can say gravity is both pulling these towards the center of the Earth, or basically vertically downwards. Now, what we can also look at is how these objects are moving in the up-down direction. When I let go of it, it has no vertical velocity. It's still in my hand, and then the instant I let go, if we could look close enough at it, we would see that they are completely stopped. This one is completely stopped in the up-down direction. Now, the one that's moving, if we look at how it's moving, it's only moving horizontally. So, this up-down component of it, the movement that's going up and down, isn't happening. It's only moving horizontally. So, both of these have an initial velocity of zero meters per second only in the up-down direction. And now one more bit of given information. To the best of my ability, what I tried to do was hold the ball out shoulder to height. Right? So that meant that both objects, when they fell, they both had to fall a vertical displacement, which was the exact same as the other. So I don't know what that distance exactly is, but they both had the same displacement in the vertical direction. All right, now I said displacement is also equal to displacement. But if you look closely, I've got a lowercase y in both of these. I also did that with our initial velocities. So the reason that I did this was because we're now going to be observing objects that move both downwards, up and down, as well as side to side. So we're going to have displacements in the vertical direction. So we're going to put a little y there. We're also going to have displacements in the horizontal direction. So if we're looking at that, it's going to be an x. So. Same thing, my initial velocity in the vertical direction or in the y direction is going to be v sub y, little y, sub little y. So if we were to write down what we have given, we know an acceleration due to gravity. We know that that's going to be a negative 10. That's a given information. We also know that our object started falling from 0 meters per second. That's another given information. And I can also tell you what our displacement is. I'm just going to kind of guess that it's about 1.6 meters. With this, we can do all sorts of information. We can find out how fast it's moving at the end, how long it took for them to fall. But this is all in the vertical direction. Now we're going to look at the horizontal direction of just the one that is moving, only the green object. So let's look at the horizontal part of it now. So our object that was in motion, our tennis ball that I let go while I was walking, how did that object move? When I let go of it. Was there a force on there? Did I, was there a force to make it speed up or slow down while it was falling? Take, quite, take a second. Talk with your partner. Hopefully what you said was you said that no, there wasn't a force. There was nothing to give it a, a push. There was nothing to speed it up. There was nothing to slow it down while it was in motion. So the velocity that the object had just before I let go of it and the velocity that the object had just before it hit the ground had the same value. This also had a value of velocity. So the acceleration throughout the process was zero. There was no acceleration through there. Or there was no push. What are you talking about, Mr. G? You gave it a push. It was initially at rest, and then what you did was you pushed it. Your hand on the object gave it a force. You had a force. You gave it an acceleration. So there was an acceleration. Why? So this can't be true. 
acceleration is not equal to zero meters per second squared. Now, I don't disagree with you. I did give it a velocity. I did give it a force to get it in motion, yes. I accelerated the object to a certain speed. But once I got it to this speed, then I let go of it. You didn't see me apply a force, and so we don't care about it. The only time that you saw the object in motion was when it was already at its maximum value of speed. So the change in velocity, you didn't see it go from stopped to now moving, which shows a change in velocity. You saw it in motion, and then I let go of it, and it stayed in motion. While it was not in contact with my hand, as soon as I let go of it, and it makes the path that it did, there was no acceleration in the side-to-side -side direction. I wasn't giving it a push. There was no way that as this fell, I was willing it to go. I was trying to get it to move. So I could not give it a push. All right, Mr. G, then I've got something. This has been confusing me for a little bit. If I have a ball up in the air and I let go of it, what is willing it to move? What is making my ball want to fall to the ground? Why does it do that? It, the earth definitely isn't touching it. There's nothing to make contact with it, so why is it moving? Why does it fall when you let go of it? Now, to put it as simply as I can, all matter has an attraction to each other. All matter likes to be around each other. So, the ball likes the earth. The earth likes the ball, so they want to be close together. So they attract each other. That's just like a north side and a south side of a magnet. They want to be near each other, so they're going to attract. You have an attraction to the computer right in front of you. You have an attraction to every other human being on the earth. You have an attraction to the sun. The sun has an attraction to you. So, every object wants to be closer to each other. There's always just this pull, this natural force that tries to pull each other close together. And that is what gravity is. So, yes, there is no physical contact between a ball and the earth until they come in contact, but there is an attraction just because matter, little particles, like to be next to each other. Now that we're off that little side note, I want to talk about what we just discussed before the side note, where we said the object horizontally, just side to side motion, as soon as I let go of it, it had some velocity. I gave it that velocity and then I let go of it and it continued with that. So the velocity at the beginning was the same as the velocity at the end. VO is equal to VF. We also said that since there's no change in my velocity, the speed at the beginning and the speed at the end are going to be the same. And acceleration is my change in velocity. Well, there's no change in velocity, so there's no acceleration. And then we have x and t. This is the awesome part about horizontal motion. Any time that I have horizontal motion, I'm going to use one formula. Only one formula. The easiest one. Same one we used, second unit, with constant velocity. x is equal to average velocity times time. Displacement is equal to velocity times time. We got that from our graphs, both position graphs. Position over time gave me my velocity. And when we plotted a velocity time graph, the area, or length times width, gave us our displacement. So, no matter what, we're always going to use this formula for only horizontal. And then our acceleration ones, the same ones we used in unit 3, are going to be used for the vertical direction. When we lay these out side by side, horizontal and vertical, we should get something that looks like this. Where we should have all of our vertical variables labeled. We should have all of our horizontal labels we can always put zero in for A in the horizontal direction. And this is exactly why I told you guys we need to write out our givens every single time. Because now, instead of just using five possible variables, we now have five here, as well as another four here, because zero is always going to go in there. So we have a total of nine variables that we're going to need. Now, there's a variable on here. And I want you to make a prediction. I want you to make a prediction with your partner. Again, put into the form. And 
Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, but we're going to make a prediction. What I'm asking for, these two variables are going to be the same between my vertical and my horizontal. No matter what, they're always, always, always going to be the same. Now, which variable do you think it is? Is it going to be my initial velocities? Is it going to be my uh, final velocities? Is it going to be my displacements, my accelerations, or my times? So hopefully, you got this one. Hopefully, you got that time links both variables together. The reason that this is, is because an object, when it falls, even if it's falling with a horizontal velocity, if it's moving side to side, there is no way an object can fall farther down, for a longer amount of time down, than it can out. As soon as I let go, that starts time. So it's moving horizontally as well as it's falling at the same time. Then just before they hit the ground, they stop, right? So right as they hit the ground, that's when the time stops. There's no way that either one of these could be longer than the other. But Mr. G, what happens when an object moves? Once it hits the ground, it bounces and it continues and continues and continues until it rolls. Well, then it's rolling and it's moving horizontally longer than it's moving vertically. Isn't that a scenario? Okay, it, it is. Um, yes, a ball can bounce and it can roll and it can continue on longer out than it has down. But when we look at projectile motion, when we look at two-dimensional kinematics, we only care about while it's in the air, when nothing but gravity is affecting it. So, as soon as we let go of the object and it falls, Right before it strikes the ground, gravity is the only thing acting on it. As soon as it makes contact with the ground, the ground's going to try and push it back up. It doesn't want the ball to go through the ground. So then the ground applies a force on it, and we don't care about that. We can't work with that right now. So the only time we care about is while gravity is acting on it. Then once it hits the ground, we stop looking at it. Time is done. So while something is in contact with another surface, we don't look at it. So right here, we are still just going to be moving out as long as we're going to be falling. Hopefully, you've gotten a little bit out of this on what exactly projectile motion is, how we were able to combine two separate ideas of horizontal, constant velocity, and vertical accelerating objects. Now, hopefully we got two main things out of this. One, the only thing that affects our objects, that makes our objects change velocity, is going to be gravity. Gravity is the only thing that affects our objects. Second part is that an object that is moving horizontally, side to side, if I shoot an object up side to side or it rolls off the table, the side to side component acts like constant velocity. Those are the two big parts that I want you to get out of this. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.